Hi, I'm Paul Tugood. I am one of the orthopedic surgeons at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. I perform trauma surgeries, emergency surgeries, and I also perform joint replacements, specifically hip and knee replacement. And today on this video, we're going to be looking into hip and knee replacement and how you make the decision whether or not to have that surgery. So a total joint replacement is essentially a resurfacing of the joint. Whether a hip or a knee, our goal is to take away the cartilage, the caps on the end of the two bones that are no longer healthy, uh, and replace that with a new smooth surface, metal and plastic. In the knees, we end up taking small cuts of bone and cartilage and putting a cap on the end of the two bones, the femur and the tibia. Uh, and then in a hip replacement, we end up putting a cap uh, in the hip socket made out of metal and plastic. And the top of the hip, the ball, is completely replaced with a metal ball. It again, replaces the cartilage ball that you normally have in your native hip. So the primary thing a patient needs to consider when deciding whether or not to have a knee replacement is how much the hip or knee that they're considering replacing bothers them, which is essentially the question of how much pain do they have and how much dysfunction do they have because of this hip or knee? How much is it interfering with their quality of life? Uh, that's the first question. If the answer to that question is, it's bothering me a lot, then it's worth considering a hip or knee replacement. If the answer to that question is, it bothers me a little bit, but I'm still able to do almost everything that I do normally, uh, then the answer to whether or not you want a hip replacement is probably no. And the reason for that is that there are risks associated with the procedure and the benefit needs to justify those risks. The ideal candidate for hip or knee replacement is someone who experiences significant pain and dysfunction related to their hip and knee, but also uh, is someone who is medically optimized for surgery. Hip and knee replacement is inherently an elective procedure, meaning that it is not done under emergency circumstances, and therefore we want patients to be uh, as fit as possible before they undergo what is a major procedure with some risks associated with it. Uh, so medical optimization for surgery is not just one thing. It's different for every patient because all patients come with more or less medical problems prior to surgery. At the very minimum, it means meeting with an anesthesiologist to review your me medications, review your medical problems, to make sure that your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys are as good as we can make them prior to considering surgery. Some patients have certain conditions with their heart, their lung, their kidneys that may require them to see other physicians as well, such as a cardiologist, a pulmonologist, a rheumatologist. And so prior to considering surgery, we may ask you to see one of these providers as well, again, to make sure that all of your medical conditions are as in as good a shape as possible prior to undergoing an elective procedure. So there are a couple of things that might exclude someone from going forward with a hip or knee replacement. One thing, and probably the most common thing, is just that patient's symptoms don't actually warrant that treatment. So not infrequently, we'll get referred a patient who has x-rays of their hip or x-rays of their knee that show very serious arthritis. But when the patient actually comes to see me, they're not particularly symptomatic or they control their pain very well with just an Advil or a Tylenol. If that's the case, then the risks of surgery probably don't justify the benefit because the patient doesn't stand to benefit much from surgery. Another thing that may exclude a patient, at least temporarily, uh, from moving forward with surgery is an active infection. So infections after hip or knee replacement can be a devastating complication that again require potentially multiple surgeries and a prolonged period of antibiotics to get rid of. So we do everything we can to try to avoid that complication. So if someone has a known active infection before surgery, that's gonna to have to be controlled and actually eliminated prior to considering surgery. Places that are common are the teeth and the skin. The major pro of undergoing hip or knee replacement is pain relief. That is the primary indication for this surgery and it is what patients come back weeks and months after surgery being very grateful for having had the surgery performed for. Their pain is gone or diminished and patients feel better and because of that they function typically at a higher level. So the activities that were bothering them before tend to not bother them as much or at all after this procedure.
Unfortunately, all surgery, including hip and knee replacement, has risks. What are those risks? I can't list all the risks, but the ones that patients should make sure they consider are, number one, there is a risk of bleeding. The risk of bleeding so much that you might require a blood transfusion either during surgery or during the hospitalization is about 5%. There is also a risk of infection. The risk for infection is low, both for hip and knee replacement. The risk of infection for a hip replacement is about 1%. The risks of infection for knee replacement is about 2 to 3%. So the risks overall are low. However, if you're that one or two to 3% of patients that develops an infection, it's a big deal. In addition to bleeding and infection, other risks that people have to be aware of, there's a risk of blood clots. So everyone after surgery has to be on a blood thinner for six weeks. There's a risk of dislocation for hip replacements. Fortunately, that's relatively rare. It's about a three to 5% risk over someone's lifetime. Uh, and most of the time when it happens, it happens in the first three months. The final risk that uh, people with knee replacements should consider is the risk of stiffness. So after a knee replacement, people have to specifically work on regaining their range of motion, meaning getting their knee fully straight and getting their knee bent as possible. It is possible for people to lose significant motion after surgery if they don't intentionally work on regaining motion. And that can sometimes require significant amounts of therapy or even a second surgery to regain that motion.